Well, hey, what's up, gang? It's Stu Wetstein, founder of Recruiter Confidential, and welcome to your first in the free training series. The number one, the number one reason companies say yes, more often than not. And while I am very anxious on this incredibly fancy chart here that I have to show you, to show you the number one reason, we got to talk about some of the reasons that they don't say yes, or some of the reasons that they don't say yes all by themselves. Because what you're going to find, the riddle to this, the riddle to this answer as to why they say yes, is it's a collection of things. And it's a collection of very specific things. So let's look quickly, because this is just a first video, let's look quickly at some of the reasons that not all by themselves do they say yes. Okay, do companies say yes based solely on your resume or based solely on your LinkedIn profile or your digital profile? And everybody may have a little story of this. There may be people in your lives who say, hey, I know a guy who's a PhD in economics, and he gets hired just by sending his resume out. And in that guy's case, that's probably true. But for the rest of us, and you know, more than likely than any of the jobs that you're pursuing, the resume alone is not going to do it. The LinkedIn profile alone are not going to do it. They've got to be great. They've got to be top notch. You've got to invest in them. But all by themselves, no, that's not just going to get you to a yes. OK, what else? Oh, well, it's all just about who you know, your connections, or your network. And those are important, but all by themselves? No. Why? Because they're just going to get you in the door. The a connection, even to a CEO, is going to get you into the interview process. But that's not ever going to be an automatic yes, unless you really are owed some favors. So you need to have a strong network. You need to think about how, what connections can lead you to an interview. But are you going to get a yes just solely on that? No. All right. Third, just based on the job skills, just because I know how to do this, just because based on my resume, it's got the bullet points or my LinkedIn profile, someone has given me a testimonial that says that I know how to develop or I know how to run a sales team or I know how to create a training program. And that all by itself is going to get me the job. Not today. That's not enough. There are too many variables that go into what's a successful person at companies these days that just the job skills alone, that, that doesn't work. Because even if you think of something that you, you might think of as very repetitious or a job that is you know, more about the skill or just about doing certain things over and over again, even then they're going to want you to be a culture fit. Even then they're going to want you to be well-rounded. Okay, so it's not just the skills. All right, what about work history? Just because I've worked at a specific place. Maybe I worked at a really impressive brand. Maybe um, I've got, I had that exact same title at a different company. Yeah, but you've still got to go to the interview, right? You're still going to have to go through and show that your perspective, your collection of skills is going to get you there. It's not just about, I had this job at another company. You still got to go through an interview process. You still got to show you can bond. You still have to talk about successes and all of those other things. So it's never going to be just work history by itself. Okay, well, maybe it's just about the wins I've had in my career. Maybe it's just about me coming in and talking about at this company, you know, because I was a salesperson and then I ended up running a small territory and a bigger territory. Now, it's not just about the wins. That's the trap we can all fall into when we go you know, through a job interview process. And I, and I promise you, I've been there. And while you want to be a fan of yourself and you want to be able to talk about your career and the successes, if you really want to take this to the next level, think about your losses. Think about times that maybe were labeled as a failure. That will take you further in many interview situations than just talking about the wins, because the wins even though we want to celebrate them, and even though we don't want to overlook the times you've been successful, that's not just enough because at companies, when change is so constant these days, they want to know well, what's going to happen maybe not on a good day. Okay, well, maybe it's just about my ability to interview. Okay, is that what you're saying, Stu? So it's like, you know how when you're in college or in high school, people would say, oh, well, so-and-so is just a good test taker. That's why they do well um, you know, in school, not because they're smarter than me or not because they know anything that I know. So maybe people who just interview naturally really well get yeses all by themselves. No, there's no chance because if you don't have the right combination, the right resume, the right LinkedIn connections, the right ability to work your network, the right ability to look back at your career history, well, then just being able to talk, just being able to integrate, you know, and build rapport, that, that's not going to be enough by itself. That's an important factor. But all by itself, no, that's not going to get you to a yes. 
okay, well, maybe just because I'm a culture fit, maybe just because I'm easy to deal with, maybe just because I'm just like the employees at this company that I'm trying to get into. Huge, massively important these days. As a recruiter, this is more what people talk about from the other side of the hiring desk than any of these other things put together. Really, are you a fit for the culture? Yeah, you've got the skills. Yeah, you've, got, you've done this before. Yeah, you've, you know, you've had some success. But are you a fit for this culture? Are people going to want to work with you day in and day out? In this environment, in this you know, world we live in where 10-hour days and 12-hour days and having your cell phone on your birthday and your anniversary and all of those things is so common, are people going to want to spend that kind of time with you? This is a huge piece. Now, this one by itself, sometimes, because you are just such a natural, dynamic, amazing connection, might get you a couple of steps ahead in the interview process, but rarely do I see offers just based on this because recruiters and hiring managers, HR professionals, we all have to defend our hires. We have to defend why we go to bat for somebody, why we use that position, that, that opening for that particular candidate. So just on a culture fit, just because likability, that, you know, that's huge, but that's not enough all by itself. Okay, one more. What about an attitude of gratitude? or just being a gracious, grateful person so that as you go through an interview process from the time you submit the resume all the way through getting the offer and going through, you know, filling out your benefits information, are you a gracious, cool person to deal with? Because those are the candidates that I see that really excel in an interview process. Because, you know, all these other pieces, they're very important. But if you're gracious, if you're appreciative of being in the interview process, if you're appreciative of the time that people are taking, well, that really takes you to the next level because even if it doesn't end up being that position, then that's how you end up getting referrals. That's how HR managers talk to each other. That's how someone says, hey, you know what? We weren't able to make move forward with this candidate, but here's what we liked about them. If you can do nothing else through all of this process, and if you're out there interviewing and you're going through a time when it's frustrating, Find a way to be grateful. Be grateful for the interviews you're getting. Don't take them for granted. Every last one of them, especially the phone screens, don't overlook them. Nothing's an automatic anymore. And hey, if you know people who you know, are submitting for the same job and they get interviewed and you don't, be happy for them because your time is coming. The, the perfect job, the perfect opportunity, the perfect hiring manager, location, compensation, et cetera, et cetera, is coming. One of the only constants I can tell you about from the recruiting profession after 20 years of this, I can tell you is that it is a numbers game. And while I never want you to think of yourself as blasting your resume out in mass, but if you have a targeted strategy, if you have a targeted campaign, then you know that if you just continue marching along, eventually you're going to get a yes. But if you can stay gracious and appreciative to everybody you interact with, well, then you leave that signature behind. You become memorable for all the right reasons. Okay, so these pieces, quickly, the resume, your network, your skills, your work history, your wins and your losses, your failures, your interview skills, your culture fit, the attitude of gratitude, all very important criteria, all reasons that companies say yes, but not by themselves. But there is one, the number one, as we've been talking about, the whole time, the number one reason, the number one reason, and that is all of these things added together equal this, your perspective. And I just want to talk about this quickly, and I talk about this in depth in all of the videos you're about to get on the seven strategies, in all of the information that's available at Recruiter Confidential. This is what we focus on because all of these equal this, your perspective. It's not just about if you won. As a matter of fact, if you've been through something tumultuous or chaotic in the last few years, then this is a good thing to lean on because you can talk about what did you learn from that? What did you learn from an industry changing or having to reinvent yourself? That perspective, that's the thing that people say yes to. That is why companies say yes to candidates who have almost the right background or almost the right job skills or almost the right work history, but they come in and they're aware of that. They come in and they see it from the hiring manager's perspective and they go in and they play offense. And they say, I know that these are all the things that are necessary in this job. And I've got eight of the 10. And let me talk about the two that I'm not strong in. Let me talk about how I'm willing to develop myself so that we can get you to a yes. Hey, what happened to you in the last couple of years? You know, I see that you've got a couple of different jobs or a gap in employment, or I see you used to have this big lofty title and then you had this position. 
your perspective, your ability, whatever metaphor, you know, taking lemons and making lemonade, what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. I can promise you as a recruiter, the times I sit there with the hiring manager and with the candidate and when this ends up being a yes, it's not just because all the boxes are marked. More often than not, it's the wild card. And the wild card is someone who knows what they've learned and knows how they can align it to that company and what that job needs. That's the number one thing. You know this, your story, what you've learned, your wins and losses, and your ability to align it and talk about why you're a culture fit and going through all of that and being cool and gracious, that's your perspective. You have that, you're gonna be unstoppable, not just in a job interview, but in a sales call or in a mid-year review. You know, sitting down with your boss, talk about what you're learning and talk about how that benefits them. That's the number one thing. That's what's going to get you to the next level. That's what's going to get companies to say yes. So that's the first training video. You're going to get a whole bunch in the weeks to come. But thanks for taking the time to watch this one. And until then, obviously keep us posted on your success at RecruiterConfidential.com. And otherwise, <laughs> until then, get out there and interview with passion.